Seth, uh, let's unpack here what we've learned here. Overall, we kind of know where the production and delivery numbers were going, but there has been a big concern here about whether they've been cutting prices too aggressively in order to keep those delivery numbers up. What did you make of the report today? Yeah, I think we clearly saw that the, the price cuts have had a major impact on profitability for what is now the fourth straight sequential quarter. And, you know, as Tesla is, is pursuing the long-term volume growth to generate ancillary revenues over a near-term profit strategy, they might cut prices further in the fourth quarter to spur demand. And if they do so, we would likely see profits take another step down in Q4. They also, of course, uh, the big headline uh, crossing the terminal is the Cybertruck, which has been teased, I feel like, for years now. Uh, Tesla now putting an actual date on it, saying deliveries at the end of November. Yeah, it's, you know, we're in a time where Tesla has finally started to put a timeline on the, on the Cybertruck. GM delayed their truck by another year. I think this helps boost volumes heading into 2024 because I think there's going to be a strong initial demand for the Cybertruck. And if it has the technology and it is one of the best EVs on the market from a technology standpoint, that should help boost Tesla, help uh, refresh the brand, help, help remind everyone that Tesla does make some of the best EVs on the market in the luxury vehicle segment. So, Seth, the number that everyone focuses on here for Tesla is not necessarily the Cybertruck delivery date, but the automotive gross margin, especially when you back out the regulatory credits. And for the third quarter, it was 16.3%. That is below what analysts expected, which was uh, just north of 17.5%. How much room does Tesla have with that gross margin, that automotive gross margin, when you back out regulatory credits? Well, clear, clearly Tesla is not too worried about near-term uh, profitability. We can see that. Management has made the comments in the past couple of earnings that they can sell their profits at zero growth margin, zero profit margin, and, and be just fine because they take the long-term view. Now, in reality, I think we're getting to the point where you're starting to see the Tesla Model 3 approach something like the Toyota Camry on a total cost of ownership basis. And I think that's what management is aiming to, is get the Model 3 and the Model Y into those more full sedan, uh, mid-sized SUV type of price categories. So I don't expect there will be a ton of extra price cuts here, but we may see some you know, slight price cuts in the fourth quarter to help spur demand to finish the year strong. Yeah, I, I believe um, Elon Musk had said in July that Tesla would have to continue to cut prices as long as interest rates were rising. So that, that does not really put a lot of confidence in investors' minds if they're looking for those price cuts to end anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, Tesla Tesla's viewing this from the consumer payment standpoint and saying we don't want to make the consumer have to pay multiple hundreds of dollars a month more just because of higher interest rates. So they can either cut prices, they can potentially look to start to go into financing, mm -hmm. take on some of the interest rate risks themselves. But I think generally Tesla's taking the price cut strategy as a way to sort of ease the consumer payment relief and with, with the goal of potentially raising prices if interest rates were to be cut in the future. I am curious, though, about the sort of the longer-term growth story. I mean, we're talking about a company just on an overall revenue basis that's basically been growing a, a well into the high double digits, I think, with a minor blip that they had in 2020 because of the pandemic. That's come down to the single digits, at least for this quarter, and I think the expectations are for single digits for the fourth quarter as well here. Uh, what do you think ends up being, uh, I guess, a, uh, uh, I guess, an appropriate baseline growth rate, long-term baseline growth rate, that investors should start to to price in? Well, we certainly think 50% is way too optimistic. We disagree with management that they're going to be able to hit the 50% year over year delivery mark. We're, we're more at about 20% long term, and this includes total company wide. So you're looking at energy generation and storage, you're looking at the other segment, which we do expect to see higher growth rates than automotive going forward. But we, we disagree that the 50% volume growth will be achievable anytime soon in the, in the next several years. So Seth, as we look ahead to the earnings call, this will be the first one featuring the new CFO, uh, Vebab Taneja. Investors, of course, were pretty accustomed to Zach Kirkhorn, who had been there for a long time. Are you anticipating a smooth transition or some growing pains as uh, Taneja gets accustomed to translating Elon Musk speak for investors? 
I, I'd imagine we see a very similar, you know, CFO compliment to Elon Musk. Um, I, I don't expect too much of a change on the earnings call here. It's not like Tesla was formerly guiding to a lot of detailed numbers, and hmm. that might be, you know, changed with a new CFO. I think we're just going to hear, you know, how, how uh, Elon Musk and his management team think from the financial standpoint, uh, you know, so, so a lot of the same.